IBS Online. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of IBS BFSU International Podcast. My name is Lauren and I'll be the host for today. It has been quite cold this week and I hope everyone has been keeping warm, cozy and active. In a few moments, we shall have Rin in the studio with us for the Ultimate News Broadcast. Rin, over to you please. Latest news review on IBS BFSU International Podcast. On August 18, a Japanese town broke a Guinness World Record at its annual summer festival when a team of chefs used their local potatoes to cook up the world's largest croquette. A croquette is a type of dumpling consisting of a thick binder combined with a filling which is breaded and deep fried. It is served as a side dish, a snack or fast food worldwide. The town of Asabu has cooked up jumbo croquettes at its summer festival since 2004. And this year's finished product earned a Guinness World Record when it weighed in at 615 pounds. The team used 551 pounds of potatoes as well as 110 eggs and 200 pounds of grounded beef and a large amount of onions. The finished croquette was cut into about 1,300 portions and served to festival attendees. A British man traveled 6,400 kilometers and spent $2,400 to find the person who took his airport. Lewis Ellis said he forgot his headphones on the plane when he flew to Bangkok. He wanted to get back on the board, but he was told that he could pick up his things at the airport later. However, no one bought the lost items, so the guy decided to determine the location of the airport using a special program on his phone. Ellis has shared that he was watching his headphones fly from one corner of the world to another, and even visited a village in the Himalayas. After days of searching, the man was finally able to get his beloved airports back. As the man said, the headphones were returned to him without any problems, and he himself isn't offended at all and simply is glad that he was able to return his property. The police had to catch a turkey that entered someone else's apartment. The bird ended up in the apartment, breaking the window pane. Even if the search for the cause of what happened turned out to be quick, but the capture of the turkey became a very difficult and tedious task. The feathered criminal didn't want to give up at all and ran away from the offices with a net. However, the law prevailed and caught bird was kicked out of the house. Now she's back in the wild where she can reflect on her behavior. Thanks, it was Rin, new service, IBS BFSU International Podcast. Latest news review on IBS BFSU International Podcast. Thank you, Rin. Welcome back to IBS BFSU International Broadcast. As the borders of all countries have started opening up and COVID-19 restrictions relaxing, many are starting to travel again. On today's podcast, we shall discuss if traveling in a group or solo is better. Both has its pros and cons, so let's see what each group has brought to back up their claims. Let's pass the floor to our experts and see what they have to bring us on their side. Please, stay with us for this wonderful topic. Debates on IBS BFSU International Podcast. Good evening, everyone. This is Konstantin Malkov at IBS BFSU International Podcast. And today with us, uh, there is Adam. Hi. There is Lauren. Hi, everyone. Old girl and Lois. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi. What are we discussing today? Is it about traveling, right? Yeah, yes, it is. Why we decided to choose the topic? Oh, well, I think it's I think quite we an exciting thing to discuss about. Yeah, yeah, uh, I Because agree. we, like, we weren't able to travel for almost two years, and now that things are going back to normal, we have decided to talk about these things. Yeah, so we're talking about whether traveling in a group or solo is better. And in my opinion, I think that traveling 
solo is more enjoyable because like I don't have to be responsible for as many things. What do you guys think? Thank you very much, Lauren. Yeah, I think traveling alone, according to my experience, for the last five, seven years, I was traveling alone only and I felt myself more more or less comfortable. So Adam, you wanted to add it. I tend to disagree. I, I, I think that company is really important. I went to the, I went to ride a roller coaster alone and it didn't feel it didn't feel right to just ride a roller coaster alone at a theme park and I was like no this is not right then I I, I would rather much have company like my brother or something there so yeah but at the time my brother just didn't decide to go to the trip because he was too annoyed so I mean I mean I I'd rather have a, I'd rather have company I'd rather have someone to talk to just be there yeah I, I rather have company, somebody who shares, who, who has fun together with you, who makes From memories. this point of view, yeah, this is quite interesting allegory. It means that traveling is low, alone is like riding a roller coaster alone. Probably you have some, uh, you have some other positions, guys. I think as a solo traveler, I can do what I please and often have lots of friends, make lots of friends as the travel goes and discover what I want and enjoy the freedom to decide where to go and without needing to compromise and or work around other schedules and it removes the risk of being let down by others. I agree entirely from my experience. Well, I can say that I was making a lot of different friends. However, the question arises how to choose the friends when you're traveling alone i think you don't choose because i would another benefit of traveling by traveling with uh with a group of friends is you increase the budget by a lot instead of paying the cab you you have like four to five people paying the cab off i don't think you get to choose i i don't understand by choose but i would just take anyone to come with me rather than being alone that's what i am trying to say interesting position a good one by the way probably traveling in a company is better than traveling alone who else has to add i mean what you said is true regarding like how our budget is down by much less and but in a way if i'm traveling alone i would still share a cab with um strangers especially since nowadays um transport like taxis they are regulated by apps and lots of rules and regulations so i think it's pretty safe to be honest it's not um, but for me i think i'll get a small group tour like guided even though if you know, sometimes i go to places that i don't know their language or something all right ladies and gentlemen we're discussing what is better how we're traveling alone or see the world with a group of people and cut the budget or be alone and see the world with a small group of people this this is IBS BFSU International Podcast. Please stay with us. Debates on IBS BFSU International Podcast. International Podcast. Welcome back. This is Konstantin Malkov and IBS BFSU International Podcast. We're discussing uh, what is better, traveling alone or traveling in the groups. And we decided that all these models have specific um, advantages. So, guys, the floor is yours. Uh, what is better, alone or in a group? Well, um, traveling as a group, I feel like you have plenty of fun, but it can be also very frustrating to try to please everyone. And you mainly socialize with only that group. So I feel like you don't meet new people and you just do not give yourself a chance to meet other people just a second i would like to uh, ask the question so what actually prohibits you uh from 
meeting new people if you're in the group. I don't see any obstacles here. Because you're too busy socializing with the group you're going with. I don't see any obstacles if you are feeling too busy socializing with group. Probably you should have some time for socializing with someone else. Don't well, think so. Um, Just take an example from Adam's experience that he went onto a roller coaster and felt really lonely without his brother and stuff. So um, maybe he could have just, you know, met the person who's sitting next to him or like try to get to know each other instead of... I will tell you one story. I'm used to ride roller coaster alone because it, it has more fun. You know, adrenaline level is going upper if, and even higher if you're riding a car alone. Maybe somebody else has another experience hi i would like to say something um uh i went okay so i was in i was in a place and it's i, I find it really hard to socialize because people just it, it's not as easy as you think just going up to a stranger and be like hi you want to go get a drink hi what movie are you watching later hi can i have your number hi Exactly. You, 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 they are strangers. You, small talk. I mean, from where I come from, small talk is very hard here. So even if you do get small talk, there's just no guarantee that you 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 will get to be friends. My experience, and in uh, yeah, I mean, actually, my yeah, experience, yeah. May, may, maybe all have different experiences. I can only agree with this. Lauren, you wanted to add something. Oh, well, in my opinion, I think small talk is a great way to make friends no matter where you're from or where you are. Like, it, I mean, maybe in Adam's experience, it'll be slightly different because I'm a bit more extroverted. So maybe it's easier for me to have some small talk with a stranger and, you know, it can sort of lead to a, a good friendship. In fact, one of my close friends was actually a stranger I met in a in a restaurant. So yeah. Well, I was actually uh, dining at the restaurant with my family and she was as well. But uh, we met in the bathroom <laughs> and... A nice place to meet. Yeah. Where can we meet you people in the bathroom, guys? Uh, in, in the right. Yeah, because it was quite a, a fancy restaurant, I would say, and both of us were uh, touching up our cosmetic, our makeup, and yeah, so that's how the conversation started. I mean, I have never had an experience like that. And let me just ask you, what if I did the same thing? What if I, uh, let's say I met you on the, uh, met you on the MRT, be like, hi, Lauren, you want to go grab a drink later? Exactly. You, you see, you see, you see where I come from. Maybe I'm just not as extroverted. It would be. It's just not. I, I have. I, I find it really hard to talk to strangers. I, Unless, I think it depends on the way that you approach people. Like you can't just like, hi. Do you want to get a drink with me? Like perhaps you need to start it off like, oh hey, you have really nice shoes or something like that. I see, guys. But the problem is, I don't know. See, guys, guys, guys. Probably, I see that me in the bathroom has its own sides of traveling alone or traveling in the group. I think it's the best place ever to meet, guys. This is IBS BFSU International podcast. Please stand by. Debates on IBS BFSU International podcast. FSU International Podcast. Welcome back. This is IBS BFSU International Podcast and me, Konstantin Malko. Uh, so we're discussing how to start a small talk with other people, no matter are you traveling alone or are you traveling with a group. So, Lauren, you started this conversation. So, how to start a small, small talk with a person? Well, in my opinion, it usually be something pretty general and about a certain topic that you think that the other person can relate to. For example, like you were, uh, Adam was saying, he would come up to a stranger and, hey, 
would you like to go for a drink? Um, I think that's a bit too uh, quick in terms of building the relationship. So maybe we could start with like complimenting someone on perhaps their clothes or perhaps the way they carry themselves. Something that you admire about them or something that you notice when you first see them. I don't really know how to do that. That's why maybe I find it difficult. But in any case, usually I would in fact think that socializing with others, with a group, I tend to be able to socialize with strangers more because in a group we tend to be more extroverted and people will people will generally smile at us more because we don't seem that closed off we seem all happy and smiling and yeah i i i noticed it once um when we were walking and then my friends would ask me to do some some dare uh, like grab the waitress number and the waitress would just give me her number because everyone's just smiling and I think that is much easier. Adam, for you, from my point of view, the group makes you feel more confident about oh, yeah, 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 for yeah, sure, yeah. for sure. What about just making, you know, smoke talk with the strangers outside the restaurant oh, no, or I not can't. with I the can't. waiters for sure? Why not? Are you feeling shy? I think so. I think so. I think everybody just, yeah, people just probably uh, I, our... I, I can't, I can't do it if I'm by myself. I just can't. I can't, I can't. Probably I can't. other experts can share their own experience about making small talk with the strangers traveling alone or with a group. So, guys. Well, in I think of- traveling solo having is to have like, go on to an activity, especially like a travel photographer or making vlogger to keep ourselves busy and making notes. Like sometimes we can just interview and start, with, start up a topic with people. Like when they are having uh like watching something then i will just like have an interview and we, we can just start up with the topic all right so we are starting conversation with the others just by interviewing them a nice approach by the way old girl you wanted to add something yeah i agree with louis um because i have a very enjoyable experience with small talks when i was in china i was actually traveling alone in the train and It was not me who started the talk, but it was the other guy who basically asked why I didn't put the vegetables in my instant ramen when I was eating ramen. And I was just stunned the fact that he didn't thought I was Chinese because I look very Asian. And that's how we talked with each other and the conversation went like 30 minutes. And later on, uh, we've decided to have a lunch together. And yeah. And at this moment, you're deciding to get buried, am I right? Yes. Oh my God, this is a wonderful story. <laughs> so guys, we are discussing what is better to travel alone or is it better to travel with a group? And we eventually came up to the conclusion that conversations is the key to success on building the relations between people, number one. And number two, it doesn't matter the way how you travel alone or with a group. Be polite with each other and bring joy to the people around you and start making great relations by the small talk, small talk, and probably also uh, be open. It was IBS BFSU International Podcast Debates. Thank you for being with us. We're always on the top. Debates on IBS BFSU International Podcast. Latest news review on IBS BFSU International Podcast. The hijacker tried to hide from the police inside a teddy bear. Police have been looking for an 18-year-old president of Great Manchester, England, since May. Not only did the young man steal the car, he also refused, uh, refueled it without paying for gas at the gas station. Finally, the police found out where the suspect might be hiding. When the police officers arrived to search the residence, one of the police officers noticed a strange phenomenon, which he called a breathing teddy bear. It turned out that the young criminal was trying to hide from the police inside a teddy bear, but he couldn't hold his breath as long, so the police found him without any difficulties. 
The offender received nine months in prison, and police of Great Manchester couldn't help laughing. In England, rescuers had to lower a dog down a mountain because it was tired and refused to go. A dog named Maggie, along with the owner, climbed to the top of the Bon Nevis, 1,345 meters high mountain. When it was time to go back down, the 35 kilogram pet refused to go and lay down on the ground. No persuasion worked on the animal, so the owner tried to take it in her arms, but after a couple of movements, she realized that it was a bad idea. The dog was too heavy. Maggie's owner had to call rescuers to help her relieve the dog. The specialists arrived and loaded the pet on, onto a stretcher to carry it downstairs, where it had prepared some tasty food for it. The veterinarian said the dog had pouts on its bones, which may have been why it couldn't walk. If rescuers hadn't come, the lady with the dog would probably have spent the night on the mountain top. What a relief, this story has a happy ending. Thank you. It was Rin again here in New Service, IBS BFSU International Podcast. Latest news review on IBS BFSU International Podcast. IBS Online. Hey, hey, it's Lauren again. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We had a wonderful episode with our colleagues today and hopefully their claims can help you decide if you wish to travel solo or in a group on your next trip. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I and I bid goodbye for today. As always, IBS BFSU International Podcast sends you our blessings. See you on the next episode. IBS Online.